Hi, everybody. Dan Ullman, Nicole Russo, taking a look at our Friday Spa Baby Race. It's the sixth at the spa. Late pick five, 50 cent. It's the first leg. We're going six furlongs. It's a maiden special weight for two-year-olds. Let's take a look at this field. Quality pedigrees all around. There could be some future stars in here. A couple of million-dollar purchases as well. Yeah, I found this race, you know, nearly impossible. It's a Traverse Eve two-year-old race at Saratoga, and it's got everything you would expect. Uh, uh, wonderful pedigrees, high-priced horses, the, the connections you would expect, just a, a lot of fun to go through these horses and imagine what they might be. Very promising horse down towards the inside. The number one heir of defiance. This is a $400,000 yearling by Quality Road who wins 16% with juvenile debut runners. The dam was a grade two stakes winning router. She was good sprinting as well. The second dam, a debut winner and a stakes winning dirt sprinter. This one looks like he's been working very well for Brad Cox. Luis Saez takes the mount and I'm expecting a good effort. Yeah, looking at the work tab for this, this one, I would think this one is well meant for debut. They're not just here to get their feet wet. Uh, Luis Saez, an aggressive rider who should be able to work out a trip from the inside, which is the only thing that really concerns me with this one. A beautiful blend, I think, of speed and stamina in this uh, Stone Street bread pedigree. Looks like that last workout came in company with Slip Mahoney, who's an older graded stakes place horse that's won earlier this meet for Brad Cox. As always, we urge you to check out Mike Welsh and company. They have the clocker reports for Saratoga at DRF.com. The two is a horse with racing experience. That's Ankaises, who made his debut in an off-turf race, got caught in between horses in a, in a race that was kind of marred by a spill at the very end, only beaten a half length. This is probably a tougher group he's going to face. I think this is a very tough group, but that being said, I think there's a lot to like on the debut and only got beat a half a length after, you know, some traffic, some trouble. Um, and, you know, that that was on, as you mentioned, an off the turf race on a good track. And there is some weather in the forecast for this week. This one could really move up second time out for Bill Mott. $300,000 two-year-old in training purchased by Blame. Dylan Davis picks up the mount. Apollo 10 is the number three. This horse is bred for speed. Both sides of the pedigree by Violence, a superb first out sire, winning a 20% with his juvenile debut runners. This is a half-brother to Bay Storm, a multiple stakes winning turf sprinter. And uh, Apollo 10, to me, just looks like he's working very nicely for Christophe Clement, who can pop with a first-time starter. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, you mentioned Sire Violence's statistics uh, with, you know, his debut starters with his two-year-olds. And certainly that's been showcased with the likes of reigning two-year-old champion Forte, who we'll see in the Traverse the day after this race. Looks like that August 5th workout is sharp, half mile over the Oklahoma training track, sub 48 seconds. I'm expecting some speed. The four is Wajda, son of Lauban, an expensive one at that, sold for $425,000 in March after breezing a swift furlong in 10 seconds flat. The dam won seven dirt sprints and was a juvenile debut winner. Chad Brown, Flavian Pratt, got to expect good things here. Absolutely. And, you know, I'm even more impressed by that March furlong breeze, uh, you know, 10 seconds flat, a very good time. And that was over a synthetic track at OBS. And I think looking at this one's pedigree, you would expect this one to be a dirt horse. So the fact that he could work like that over what is not his preferred surface, I believe, is even more impressive. There's one of our two seven-figure purchases. The number five is Change of Command by the superb stallion Into Mischief, a $570,000 weanling sold for over a million dollars last year, 16% with juvenile debut runners, the great Into Mischief, the dam of full sister to Mrs. McDougal, who did her best running, routing on the turf. Should McGee, he might give this one a race. I have a feeling he might do a little bit better with more distance. Yeah, perhaps. But, you know, that being said, Into Mischief can just do everything. I mean, cut his teeth as a leading two-year-old sire. He's the sire of multiple champion female sprinters. So to see this one succeed going short as a two-year-old would be no surprise. But then looking at the female family and looking what Into Mischief has done with his classic courses like Authentic, certainly, you know, again, seeing this one excel with more distance would be no surprise. Uh, really an exciting prospect. Jose Ortiz takes the mount. The six is Fierceness. This is a Rapoli stable homebred by City of Light going out for Todd Pletcher. Irad Ortiz picks up the mount on Fierceness. The dam was a debut winner. She is a half-sister to Outwork who won the Wood Memorial. 
Yeah, but not only did Outwork win the Wood Memorial, Outwork won his debut at four and a half furlongs as a two-year-old, and he has emerged as a very good two-year-old sire himself with the likes of Bright Work out there right now. I'd be really interesting to see what fierceness looks like in the flesh. Sire City of Light can throw big, growthy, classic-type looking horses. Outwork was just a strapping, tremendous physical there in the immediate family. I think fierceness is very well meant if you look at the connections and you look at these sharp workouts. But I'm wondering if this is, you know, a big horse who's going to take a stride or two to get his legs under him. And that could mean the difference in a very tough field here. Rupoli kept fierceness. He sold Bilal, who he bred. This is a son of Street Sense, went for $725,000 as a yearling. And when you look at this pedigree, you can understand why. The second dam champion, Turf Mare Perfect Sing. The dam, I have to several good horses going longer on synthetic. Bill Mott trains. Florent Giroux takes them out. The thing that intrigues me about this horse is if you look at the early forecast as we film this early Traverse week, there is some rain in the forecast in Saratoga for Thursday for Friday. And I think this would, that would move this horse up a lot. Uh, the street senses often run very well in the mud and often turf type pedigrees perform well in the mud. And certainly, you know, you see all these good turf and synthetic horses there with Champion Perfect Sting and others. So this is a horse to perhaps move up a little bit depending on the, how that forecast does work out for Friday. Don't sleep on the number eight daily grind, a second time starter for Wayne Lucas, switching to Joel Rosario, a son of Medallia Dioro, a full brother to Anno Dioro, who placed, I believe, in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile, mm -hmm. sold for $1.35 million as a yearling. And daily grind didn't run great in his debut, but he broke from the rail that day and he broke a little bit slow. And Wayne Lucas moves them up second time out. Absolutely. Wayne Lucas having a really good summer with his two-year-olds at Ellis and at Saratoga, uh, reaping the fruits of last year when he and some newer clients, including BC Stables here, were very aggressive in the yearling market, as you can see here by the seven-figure purchase. They've definitely been moving on upward with experience. And really, I think all Daily Grind has to do to get an improved placing is get away from the gate better. He hit the gate on debut while breaking from an inside post. And I, I mean, that makes all the difference in these two-year-old races. Such a quality event, as Nicole mentioned. It's the Travers Eve Maiden Special at Saratoga. Let's take a look at our top selections. Nicole, so many different ways to go. Where did you land? I mean, you said it right there. There are so many different ways to go, really. I think you, I think you could take any four from this race and flop them a bunch of different ways and, you know, still not come up with the winner. I ultimately did go with air of defiance. I think he's beautifully bred for this spot. I think he's very well met for this spot. If he gets away from the gate well under Luis Saez, which I think that rider can give him, I think he could take them a good long way. I see him on the lead into the stretch with daily grind coming at him from a very good draw. I think this is going to be an exciting run down the stretch. My strategy for this race is to stay near the inside with the one, two, and the three in the kickoff leg of any kind of multiple race wagers. And Kaisers is the horse with the most experience of the three, and I think might even be the best price as he's probably taking a step up off that off turf event. But as you mentioned, Air of Defiance, there's a lot to like. I just love the speed pedigree and the work tab for the three Apollo 10. I think he's going to show some early gas. What a fun race. It's the sixth at Saratoga on Friday, your spa baby event. Good luck.